All right, so for this game, looks like we have, um, at its core, just kind of a straight sequencing game. We have seven positions to work with, so we'll line that up accordingly. And the elements themselves, we do have a, this one's a bit sticky, but essentially what we have is we have an O, we have a P, we have two R's, and this is where the curveball kind of comes in, so we have to worry about two restaurants. But otherwise, we also have S, T, and V. So essentially, as we said, seven elements, seven positions. Um, yeah, let's take a look. The first rule says that P has to be at one end of the row and the restaurant, one of the restaurants on the other side. Um, so I guess we can say that P and R are gonna have to go into one and seven. So that's kind of nice. In fact, we can kind of leave, um, we can placehold positions one and seven. Now, just to be clear, it's not that Anything goes in terms of P slash R. We can't have R here and R there, obviously, so we'll have to have P in one of them, so you want to keep that in mind. But essentially, one and seven are going to be one or the other. Next, the two restaurants must be separated by at least two other businesses. Um, okay, so I guess we can say that R and R have to have at least two spaces in between them. Um, and okay, so I guess that means that if we put like an R in number one, then the other R would be four or later. Or if the R goes into seven, then the other one would be four or earlier. So I guess there's there's something going on there, but okay, let's keep going. P has to go next to either O or V. So I guess we have to have either a PO block or a PV block. And obviously these guys can kind of flip back and forth. That could go either way. Um, Although there seems to be kind of a lot of interplay between these rules, doesn't there? Because that means that, I mean, for example, if you put the P into 1, then 2 is going to have to be O or V, and then R is going to be on the other side. Oh, but then the other R would have to go into 3 or 4 because 2 would already be taken. So, you know, it might not be a bad idea to, to exhaust that 1 and 7 positions and kind of play both directions because both of them would have kind of consequences here that might be notable. Anyways, let's keep going. Um, toy store cannot be next to the vet. So I guess we can say that T and V cannot be next to each other. Oops. This one's kind of harder to kind of put your finger onto what exactly that's going to do for us. But um, I guess we can just go with what we have. So as we said, let's let's exhaust this. We can say either P1 and R7, or alternatively, we can do R1 and P7. Um, and then from there, as we said, P has to go next to one of O or V. So this would be locked out, um, or at least restricted to O and V. Same thing with number six, um, which means we said that R, the R's have to be at least two spaces apart. So in the top scenario, if R is over here, then the second R would have to go into four or three. So I suppose we could say that, um, we can leave a reminder here, R is gonna go into one of these two positions. Um, I mean, the only other restriction here is that V and T can't be next to each other, but this one's kind of tougher to put into play, right? Because this could be a V, which means that T just can't go into three. But if it's an O, then we have to worry about where V and T will go between those spots. But that, that again, seems flexible. Now, in the bottom scenario, I guess we get kind of a mirrored setup, right? If the R goes over here, then the second R is going to have to go into four or five. Um, and again, we can leave a bit of a reminder that one of these two will have to accommodate an R. And the same thing as far as V and T are concerned, these two templates really seem like mirror images of each other. Um, yeah, you get the same kind of issue. We're not 100% on what's gonna happen with the V and T. Okay, cool. So let's see what we can do with, uh, with what we have. The questions. Question number six um, is our standard exclusion question. So we go by the rules. The first rule says that P1, R7, or vice versa. So answer choice A, has that, B has that, C has two restaurants, one and seven, that's not cool. Answer choice D, we're good and E are, is fine as well. Next, second rule, R's have to be at least two spaces between them. So A has that, B does not, B has only one space between the R's, so we can get rid of B. Um, C is already out, D, we're good, and E, we're good. Next, P has to go immediately next to O or V. So A is legit, answer choice D has an S next to P, which is not gonna work, and E has V next to P, we're good. 
Lastly, T and V cannot be next to each other. We're just down to A and E. Answer choice A has them next to each other, which we cannot do, which leaves us with E as the best answer here. And there they are separated. And as usual, let's just kind of plug that into the board. So answer choice E says R-O-T-R and S-V-P. All right, so from there, let's take a look at the locals. Um, actually, it looks like almost all of these are. So question number seven, if S goes into two, so I suppose if we have the S in two, right away that blocks us from the top template, right? Because this couldn't have been an S. So what's gonna have to happen is we're gonna have to have an R in one, a P will have to go into seven, we'll have to still have that OV split between um, on position six and the other R, I suppose same thing, the other R would go into four or five. That's still a little bit flexible, isn't it? All right, cool, I guess, let's see, maybe this is enough. The question asks, which of the following could be true? Answer choice A, could we do O5? And maybe, I mean, if we put an O over here and the V over there, the V would be safe from T, so that takes care of that, and the R could go into four. I think we might be able to swing that. Let's hold on to A, just in case. Let's take a look at the rest. P1, and definitely not. Can we do R3? And no, because the R right now has to be into one of these two, four or five. Can we do T6? No, that's O or V. And can we do V4? And oh no, that's not gonna work. Because if we put a V over here, this would have to be O, but then T is gonna be next to V in three or five, and that's not gonna work. So the best answer here is answer choice A for number seven. Next, question number eight. If V goes into position five, well, I suppose let's let's see what we can do with that. If we have the V in the fifth position, what can we do with that information? Now, looking at our two templates, I think that actually seems consistent with both, doesn't it? Because here you would have an O and this would be an R because if V is in here, then the R gets pushed. And then that, that saves the V from the T, right? So everything else seems fair game. And in the top scenario, if we put a V over here, Again, this would have to be an O, and I suppose T gets forced into three. But again, I think that's fine. Um, I'm not sure what more we could do with this. Um, so, you know, what? let's see, maybe we have enough information. Maybe we can run this mentally. The question asks, what would have to be true if we put the V into five? And actually, you know what? It looks like all of these answer choices have somebody locked in place. So. Perhaps we're missing something. You know what? Let's play out the two different templates. We, we can play by both of these. Let's see what happens. If V is in five, either we're gonna do P1 and then O would go next to it here, and then R would go into seven, or we're gonna do P7, and then the O would go next to the P over here, and then R would go on the other side. Now, second scenario, we know that the R has to go into four in order to accommodate the two spaces in between. And then we're just left with, we're left with, T and who else? S. T and S are just going to shuffle between positions two and three. Now, top template, what would happen? The other R would have to go into three or four, as per usual. Oh, but wait, T would have to go into position three. So that takes care of that. And I guess the other R, here we go, would have to go into position four. And then that leaves us with S into six. And you'll notice that chances are the R's in four in, no, in both scenarios. So best answer to number eight becomes C. Next, question number nine. If the autometrist is next to the shoe store, so if we have O immediately next to S, well, I suppose the question again becomes, what does that do for us? Now, again, that seems like it would be consistent with both scenarios, wouldn't it? Because, I mean, this could flip both ways. In the top template, if we put an O over here, then S will go over here, oh, wait a minute, and then R would have to go here, and then T and V would be stuck. So wait, if we do an OS block, this could not really be an O, because again, O here would force S there, would force R into four, and then V and T are stuck. And I'm guessing because these are mirrored, you're gonna get the same thing on this end. If you put an O here, you'll have an S here, you'll have an R here, and then V and T will be stuck together. Which means if O and S are next to each other, this 
and this, they couldn't be O's, they would have to be V's. And then from there, it seems like we could do a lot more, right? T obviously wouldn't go right next to it, but um, we'd have a bit of flexibility. You know what, let's see what we can do with that information. The question asks, the businesses immediately on either side of this pair must be what? Okay, so we're not quite done. So apparently if O and S are together, there's only one set of things that could be next to the O and S. But you know what, since there's only one possibility of what could be next to it, we just need to try out something that would work and that would be enough to answer the question. Um, so as we said, it would have to be the V next to P. So let's use this first template and run with that. If we put a P here, this would have to be a V immediately next to it. And then R would go into seven and into one of three or four. Just to simplify this, in order to avoid the TV block, let's put the R into three. And then here we have flexibility. The OS could go into say four and five. And the other element is T and they're gonna go on the other side. So this is functional, which means that if this works and according to the question, the question is suggesting that there's only one set of elements that could go next to the OS block, this would have to be it. So the answer becomes the R and the T. The best answer to question number nine is D. Now that might feel uneasy to be fair because wait a minute, this didn't have to happen. What if we moved the R into number four, right? You might be thinking, uh, shouldn't we try that? And that's fair, you know what, let's, let's see what would have happened. To be fair, again, based on the nature of the question, since there's supposedly only one way that this would work, then the fact that this does work would have to mean that that's it. Um, but if you wanted to really dig into what would happen otherwise, let's, let's do that. If we placed instead R into the fourth position, and we know that the other R would go into seven, ah, uh, there we go, that would have broken, wouldn't it? Because for an OS block to exist, you wouldn't have been able to do this. Um, if you put it over here, then the T would be stuck next to the V, so that wouldn't have worked. So it actually does seem like the only way that this could have worked is if we did what we did over here. Next, question number 10. If the shoe store is in space number four, so essentially if we have S here into the fourth position, um, so the question becomes, I guess, what does that tell us? What can we do with that? Now, if we look back at the uh, at our templates, um, I suppose that would easily be consistent with both possibilities, right? We could put S in the fourth position. Um, and in each one, I guess it would push the R out of the way. So here R gets pushed into there and here R gets pushed into there. Although actually, wait, we can do a little bit more with this. Um, so again, since these scenarios are, are mirrored effectively, it's just the same thing flipped around. Um, let's just use this top template to kind of show what would happen. If you put the S here, that would push the R over to here. But this, this would have to be O or V, but it can't really be an O because if this is an O, then that would force V and T next to each other in five and six, and they're not on good terms. So that can't happen. This couldn't be an O. This would have to be a V, and then O and T will just flip between five and six. And you'll notice the same thing will happen in this template here. If you stick an S over here, R will go over there. And then this can't be an O because if you put an O here, then V and T will be stuck. And that would mean that, well, that's bad. Um, so you'll have to have V over here and then O and T will flip between two and three. Now, to be fair, that's a lot of moving parts to keep track of mentally. If you're comfortable with that, then this is, yeah, this is enough information to answer the question, um, but it's not unreasonable to kind of play it out on paper. So what we can do is we'll just play out both of these templates, even though they're mirrored, it still might be kind of helpful to be able to see both ways. So we can say, if S is in four, again, there's there's two major plays that we can, we can have here. Either we're gonna have P1 R6, or we're gonna have P, sorry, seven rather, uh, P7 and R1. And in each of these scenarios, R first of all gets, gets pushed over, right? So we know that next to the P, we have to have an O or a V. Um, so R gets pushed out accordingly. In the top scenario, R would have to go over here to stay away from the other R. In this scenario, R would have to go over here to stay from the other R. And since this can't be V and T over here, the V will have to be the one that's over here and here for the same reason. So we can adjust this accordingly. We'll have to have V here, we'll have to have V there. 
and then O and T will flip between the remaining spots. So to the question itself, which of the following must be true? Answer choice A, O is next to R, and not necessarily the O could be here next to S and T. Answer choice B, P is next to V, and yes, that's kind of one of the earlier things that we mentioned, that V would end up being the one who is next to the P. The best answer choice to question number 10 is B. Just in case, though, let's take a look at the rest. Restaurant is next to the toy store, and no, because we could have the T over here and the O over there, so not next to the restaurant. Next, could we have, or must we have, S next to T? And no, because we could have O here, for example, and that would be the T and the S would be separated. Lastly, S next to V, and that actually can't happen at all, it looks like. So either way, as we said, best answer here is B. Lastly, question number 11. Which of the following, if we replace the rule that the two restaurants must be separated by at least two other businesses? So we're trying to replace this guy right here where the R are at least two spaces apart. What would have the same impact on the game? Let's take a look. Answer choice A. Actually, before we do, just as a reminder, a good answer choice to one of these questions is going to do two things. It's going to be something that always had to be true and something that, if it's true, will ensure that this restriction will be maintained. So, answer choice A. A restaurant must be in three, four, or five. Now, for the record, that actually is true, because if you look at the templates, you'll notice that we always used to have an R somewhere in these three positions, right? Either an R is going to be in three or four, or four or five, but either way, you'll definitely have an R in three, four, or five. But my bigger concern here would be, does that really do what we need it to do? I mean, just by saying that R is in three, four, or five, that doesn't really ensure that you're gonna have two spaces in between them. Cause like in the top template, couldn't you easily then have an R in number five? And that would have been possible. And then they would only have one space between them. This, this had to be true for answer choice A, but it doesn't get the job done. It doesn't ensure that there's gonna be two spaces in between them. Next, answer choice B, R must be next to O, or V. Now, I'm not sure that actually had to be true, because I mean, arguably, like in, in this top template, couldn't you have had an R over here, and then the other O or V could have perhaps gone into six? Oh, but then that's still next to R. Okay, fine, so technically this, this actually did have to be true. Um, but the real question is, does this really get the job done? Does it ensure that R's are gonna have to stay at least two spaces apart, and that I'm not sure that it would, because in this top scenario, for example, wouldn't that easily allow for R to go into five, and then one of O or V would go into six? So that would fulfill answer choice B, but it would keep them closer than we need them to be. So that wouldn't be good enough. This answer choice would not ensure that R are, the R's are two spaces apart. Answer choice C, either T or V must be somewhere between the two restaurants. Same kind of thing. I mean, this may be true. I think it very well could be. Um, but does it really get the job done? And no, because in the top scenario, if you put an R over here, you could have one of T or V in between them, and that would still work. This would allow them to be closer than they're supposed to be. So answer choice C is out. D, no more than two businesses can separate the pharmacy and the restaurant that's closest to it. Now, does that, actually, I suppose that did have to be true, didn't it? Because um, let's take a look at this scenario, for example, this template. If P is in one, then the furthest away that this R could have been is in the fourth position. So it would be true to say that no more than two businesses can separate P and the closest R. And actually, that would get the job done, too, because if you say that no more than two spaces can be between them, that means that the furthest in this scenario that R could go is four, which means that there would be at least two spaces between the R's. And same thing would happen in this template too, because if you put the P over here, then the furthest that R would be able to go is four, going the other way, and there would be at least two spaces in between the R's. So this gets the job done, and it always had to be true. Answer choice D works. Just in case though, answer choice E, O cannot be immediately next to S. Now this never had to be true because we know that O and S, in fact, there was a question about it. O and S could have been next to each other. So since this answer choice never had to be true in the first place, that would disqualify. Once again, best answer choice to question number 11 is D.